Today I'm going to show you how to make a traditional Easter Sunday meal eaten in most homes across CNT. And as a bonus, I'm going to show you an easy way to do your part to help our ecosystem. Lionfish are an invasive species that are currently inflicting long-standing damage to our ecosystem by eating many of our local fish. They are able to do this because they have very few natural predators, most likely due to their venomous spines. One simple but very effective way to help deal with this problem is to eat them. All right, y'all, so to start, the first thing we're gonna do is wash and season our fish. But to season our fish, today we're gonna make our traditional classic green seasoning recipe for y'all to see. So, you know, green seasoning is a big thing here in the Caribbean, but it's basically a few local herbs that we put together here already in is garlic, add in some fang thyme, ginger, scotch bonnet pepper, two leaves of broadleaf thyme or Spanish thyme. Just breaking it up to help the ninja. Some sive. I mean, everybody in the Caribbean has their own variation of this. Some pimentos and some shadow benny. Must put some shadow benny. And we like to put a little acid too. I mean, this part is optional. Just gonna put a little lemon juice. Save the rest for the fish. Just take out that seed. We just add in enough water just to bring it together. Ta -da. Right, so we go in to our ninja block. Take a look inside, just angle it. Ready to see. Now again, of course, this is down to preference. If you wanna make this chunkier, you can make it chunkier. It's really up to you. Right, so we're gonna just put that to the side now. I wanna use the opportunity to show you all how to clean it one time. So these are lionfish fillets. Looks just like any other white fish. So I'm just gonna add some water, just enough to cover before I add the lemon juice. The reason for that is I don't wanna pour the lemon juice directly over the lionfish because it will literally begin to cook it. Yeah, so then we go in. And you don't have to use lemon if you wanna use limes. Some people use vinegar. Right, and I like to take the actual lemon or lime, rub it in the water, squeeze it out, make sure you get all that lemony goodness out of it. Right, all right, so, so I'm just gonna drain this off and then bring it back on the board. Our land fish fillets have been drained. I've squeezed out any excess water in it. Time to season, so we're going in with some salt. Black pepper. Our green seasoning. Got that. I'm gonna get that. I'm gonna massage the seasoning into your fish. Now, part of the reason why I wanted to almost make like, make like a green seasoning smoothie is because if it was chunkier to fry this fish, You'll get a lot of sediments, a lot of um, black spots on the fish. So for that reason, I prefer a much more smoother, even consistency within the seasoning so that when you pick up a land fish, you pick up a filet and you drop this in your bread and solution, you'll get a much more even fry. Right, now it's time for our dumpling. So normally you'll see a lot of people or most people using all-purpose flour. But today we're going to be using cassava flour. Or some people do a mixture of the two. To that, we're going in with some baking powder just to help lighten the dumpling a little bit. Brown sugar, sweetness, some added flavor, mild color, and salt, of course, to season. And that goes, it's going to give this a good mix to fully incorporate. And as always, sifia flour just helps to give you a better end product. 
So I'm just going to make a little while in the middle. Just add some water. Just using my finger to incorporate the liquid before I add any more. You always add as you go. You could always add. It's a lot more difficult to take out. Right, so all the flour that has clumped up, just gonna make a space, pull it to the side. Make a little hole here, some more water. Just repeat the process until all your flour is clumped up. This is a safer, much more foolproof way to prevent, prevent you from adding excess water. And I'm using the lump also, the clump of flour also to pick up any remaining dry specks. I'm sure you know when, like, when we was younger, here in the Caribbean at least we would watch our grandmothers knead flour, knead bread, and clean the bowl simultaneously. Right, so our dough is looking a little rough right now, but that's all right because I'm gonna, after it's rested, I'm gonna knead it a second time before we shape into our dumplings. So what I'm gonna do now is cover this with some cling wrap or a warm damp cloth and let it rest. I would say minimum, at least let it rest for one hour. All right, so for our tomato sauce, heated pot over medium heat. Excuse our parrot. Going in with a little coconut oil. I prefer, I'll always choose coconut oil or mustard oil over vegetable oil. I just find, well, it's, it's better for you. It cooks cleaner. All right, so once that's heated, going in with our onion and hot pepper. Followed by our thyme and our dehydrated pimento from Charlo Farm. Check them out. Right, so just want to give this a little mix. Make sure all our ingredients is coated in the coconut oil. I wish you all could smell the coconut oil. And I'm just going to leave this to cook over medium, low to medium heat, just until the onions become translucent. All right, so as you could see, the change in color, or at least I hope you could see the change in color of the onions. It's a lot more translucent. So what I'm gonna do now is go in with my garlic. It's always best to wait to add your garlic. You never want, because garlic tends to burn very quickly. As you can see, it's starting to stick a little bit, and let me just move my hands if break again a little closer. You can see the little specks of garlic that are a lot darker in color now. So that's my cue to add my ruku. Now a little of this goes a very long way. And I know you all um, always Watching Uncle Clyde, you all love him, but you know, his ruku is available locally here in Trinidad. But this one from I Love Local, this is available on Carb Shopper to the US and Canada. So feel free to check it out. Right, so I'm just gonna give this a turn just to help coat all the ingredients in the ruku to absorb that color and flavor. Right, and now we're going in with the tomato. and get all in there. All right, so I just wanna coat the tomato now with all the ingredients. Spread it out evenly at the bottom of the pot. Right, so what I'm gonna do now is drop the heat to low, cover it, and allow the tomatoes to cook and break down. You see sometimes people rush when making tomato sauce and add water. But you don't want to do that because the tomato is practically 70% water. So you want to just give it a little time, apply some patience, let the tomato um, do its thing, cook, allow the heat to break it down, and it will start to spring its own liquid. So you're going to cover it and give it about five, five minutes and then come back and check it. 
All right. So this is about five minutes in here. Low to medium heat. I'm just turn it up to see for y'all to see. So as you could see, the our tomato is breaking down. Starting to get tender. Taking on the color of the ruku very well. So what I'm gonna do here, you know, rushing to add any water or anything else just yet. I'm just gonna give this about five minutes again, and then we will see if we wanna add water. This is depending on how much sauce you wanna remember, we're gonna be putting any fish in here. So for that reason, you know, we may want a little extra sauce, and then of course we have to season and taste. So we're gonna cover and let it go for five more minutes. All right, so our second round of five minutes has elapsed. So let's give it a turn and see where we at. Lovely. Tomato is continuing to break down, springing its own liquid. So at this point, what you could do, you could just use the back of your spoon as I'm doing here and just help, help your tomatoes out a little bit. It's hard to break it down. Because we, we're gonna be adding our fish to this, I'm gonna use this opportunity to add some water. And again, it's always best to add warm or hot water because we don't wanna stop the cooking process. All right, so stop there. Give it a mix. Just to help balance all the flavors and just going in with some brown sugar. Remember, tomatoes, tend to be acidic. Some salt. Some black pepper. And I'm just finishing with some shadow benny. The reason I'm adding this now is because I want to take full advantage of the aroma of fresh herbs. Again, I wish you all, we keep saying this, but I wish you all could smell this. Check this out. Right, so look at, let me show you this trick. So I'm sure you would have seen, I would have added the thyme um, hole like this. So when you add it in hole, it was full of leaves. Look at it, barely any leaves on it now. So instead of me having to pull off all the leaves, I just add it in hole, and then the leaves just drop off on their own. So this could come out. Right, so I'm just gonna let this go for about five minutes again and taste adjust accordingly and while this is going we're gonna get started with our provision so now it's time to steam our provision so what i did i we have some green fig here i just removed the ends left the skin on the skin has a lot of flavor so we don't want we want to capitalize on that we have some sweet pepper cassava and blue dashi now of course ground provisions or blue food as we call it here is really up to you you know, it's really up to your preference. You know, this is what was looking the best in the market when I went. So that's what I took. So I'm just going to lay them out, try to space them out as evenly as possible. I left them pretty big because steaming is a gentle, slow cooking process. All right, so we're just going to cover that now and let that slowly cook for about 25 to 30 minutes, but we'll check it and I'll show you all how to check to know when your ground provisions is fully cooked. All right, so while our provision is steaming, we're gonna use the opportunity to roll out and boil or cook our dumplings. So I just wanna lightly coat it with some flour. Obviously put some flour on the counter. I just wanna coat my rolling pin just to make sure nothing sticks. Just move some of this flour away. Yeah, just using my hands just to spread it out. And I'm just rolling it out with the rolling pin. I'm, I'm not applying any pressure to the rolling pin, just use any weight of the rolling pin. I mean, the shapes is really up to you. If you have a particular preference, I don't. So I'm just going across. Just gonna add a teaspoon of salt. Give it a quick 
quick stir just to help dissolve and evenly incorporate the salt. Fry them straight into the water they go. They will sink to the bottom and they begin to float as they cook. The light dust in the flour also helps them or helps prevent them from sticking. So then give them a little stir. Right, so what I'm gonna do now is leave them to just finish cook. They will expand and bloom a little bit in the water because of the baking powder. But that's what we want. So these will take anywhere from like 10, 12, maybe 15 minutes. All right, yo, so as you can see, our dumplings here are floating. They've been going for about 10, 12 minutes. So I just wanna show you all how to check for doneness. You just cut it straight down the center. And once the outs the inside looking like the outside, you know it cook. You can see there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're not seeing like any white spots, any clumps of flour. You know it cook from so from here you can take it up. Alright, so half an hour is up. Let's take a look at our provision. So we see the dashing has turned to its classic blue color, sweet potatoes, cassava, green fig. Right, so let me show you how to test for doneness. What you wanna do, you wanna take your knife and just stop. So once you're not meeting any resistance, you know these green figs are done. Let's check with the cassava. So a little resistance with the cassava. Check with these. Oh yeah, like butter. So it's sliding out. In and out. Check with the sweet potato here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cover it. The fire is off and I'm just gonna let it sit. It'll stay warm. The cassava will get to finish fully cook and we're gonna fry our lamb fish. All right, so our vegetable is hot. Here I have just some regular all-purpose flour. Just gonna take my fillet, knock off any excess seasoning. That will otherwise drop off any oil straight into the flour, just pressing them down just to make sure he's coated. Taking my dry hand, flipping, press it down again just to make sure it's coated. Do one more. You can smell last season. Let's give it a shake and straight into the oil. Yeah, one more piece in there. Alright, we to fit one more. You don't want to overfill your, your pot. You know, you want them to have a lot of space in between them. Now it's time to take out our fish. Now remember, this is a white fleshy fish, so it's not like kingfish or curry that comes with color that is gonna help to give you that classic dark golden brown color, okay? This is why it's look, because it's a white fish, it's gonna look a little lighter in color, but as you can see, the edges are dark brown. The fish has taken on the green seasoning color. It is not undercooked. Yeah, it's perfectly cooked. We wanna keep it. We want to help to retain as much moisture as possible. We don't want to drown the fish. We don't want to turn it into rubber. So you're just holding it up in my slotted spoon just to drain off any excess oil. And then I'm just placing it, place it here on the wire rack to continue to allow it to drain out any excess oil. All right, guys, so here we are. Finally, we have our tomato sauce, our Friter crisp lionfish fillets, our steamed provision, cassava, sweet potato, dashing, green fig, and last but not least, our dumplings. Mm -mm -mm. So what we did, just for finishing, we plated the tomato sauce over the fish. But as I said earlier, right after frying, once all the excess oil has drained, you can submerge your fish in the tomato sauce. That's how it's traditionally done. Or 
you could just serve it like this. Place the fish on your plate and top with your tomato sauce. But Lord, I can't wait to get into this. This is amazing. Thank you all so much for joining us. And as always, be sure to send us in your feedback. Send us pics, videos. When you try our recipes, we love to hear from you all. Thank you. Bye.